This is a Gear Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Mr. Perez. And you're listening to the Better Live Than Dead podcast brought to you exclusively on Gear Network. Listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Better Live Than Dead episode number 33. You can't get rid of us. You only hope to contain us. You can't stop us. You only hope to contain us. I think that's the saying. But you know what? Yeah, we're not. I, I was going to say, I, I, wanna, I, I don't want to cut you off, Press. I don't want to make you any more mad than you already are. I am Ryan Wolf. Across from me, the man in blue, Mr. Perez. What's up, peoples? Today, we are not screwing around. <laughs> Mr. Perez showed up at my home this afternoon about 20 minutes ago. Uh, and I swear I saw steam coming out of his ears like a, like a cartoon. So oh, dude. Yeah, man. I'm... It, Perez promised last uh, week we we're going to talk about the NFL. We'll talk about that next week. Um, I'm story, so livid right now. When story know. time becomes teaching time, Perez will teach us about the, hopefully, maybe next week if we remember, but I, I'm sure. Right. We'll get it at some point in time, the NFL uh, and how it's uh, tax-free and all that stuff. But right now, I'm going to hit the bumper, and Perez is going to address a, a, a situation that has been taking place over the past couple hours, including himself and some uh, dumb people. So, so without, just want to... Just want to go right into story head time. For, head for, I want to get it out of the way. I want to get you back into a, a, a good mindset. Oh, so. dude, I need to vent. So without any further ado, story time with Mr. Perez. Gather round, kids. It's story time with Mr. Perez. So on the way over here, I decided to stop at McDonald's to get a bottle of water. Because hydration's always good. I didn't feel like getting out of my car. I didn't want to run into like a gas station to grab a bottle of water. So I hadn't eaten lunch yet. So I grabbed like a cheeseburger bottle of water. So as I'm pulling away from the window, why does a whole bunch of ice and snow fall off the overhang right under my car? And I'm not talking like a little bit of snow. I'm talking like a couple of feet of snow. So I swerve and almost get hit by a car coming up on the side of me. I hit the brakes and almost get hit from the person behind me. So I look at my rear view to see how close the person had come to me. And the look on her face was priceless. Because she looked absolutely shocked that all this debris had just fallen off the roof onto my car. Now I have a brand new car. It's not even like two months old. So I pull forward and I'm automatically livid. Because all this stuff fell off the roof. Like, listen, if you own a business, you should go out there with, with like one of those tall roof ice scrapers or roof snow plows. Put it up there and pull the snow off the roof so it doesn't fall on someone's car. Now, the way the snow and ice hit my window, it actually looked like a spider web effect. So I thought my window was shattered. So I went into McDonald's ready to lynch someone. Literally, I was heated. And uh, so I walk in there, and I stand there. And the guy behind the counter goes, can I help you? And I'm like, yes, I'd like to speak with a manager. And they were like, okay, sure, let me get you a manager. So turns around to this little dude, who I don't know who he was. uh, But I, I say to him, listen. I just had a bunch of snow and ice fall off the drive through overhang, and it looks like my window is shattered. I haven't scraped it off my car yet, so I don't know if there's any other damage, but it looks like my window is shattered. Um, so he was like, well, let me go get the store manager. And I was like, well, what are you? Like, I asked for a manager. They pointed, like, like, the assistant? He was like, yeah, let me go get the store manager. So I'm like, all right, cool. Go get the store manager. So, uh, he goes and he talks to the store manager and he comes back and goes, what's your, what's your name and and telephone number? And I was like, you, I want to talk to the store manager. You promised me to talk to the store manager. I want to talk to the store manager. And he's like, well, the store manager doesn't want to come up and talk to you right now. And I was like, well, you need to go have the store manager come up and talk to me because it looks like there's damage to my car, my brand new 2015 car so I want to talk to the store manager 
And uh, he was like, well, sir, the store manager said that. I, and I, I cut him off. Like, I don't, I don't care what the store manager said. You you have a bunch of ice and snow that fell off of your roof, shattered my window. You're going to go get me the store manager. Or I'm going to come back there and get them myself. Like, your pick. And so he was like, okay, sir, I'll be right back. Meanwhile, there's customers in line who are now starting to step away from me. <laughs> like, I don't know if they can feel the anger literally radiating off of me, but they literally were stepping away from me. So... There was a tray on the counter, so I picked the tray up, and I'm, like, tapping it against the counter. Like, I'm livid. And uh, so I, I see him. You know, you walk into McDonald's, you can see straight into the back because of the way they're set up. I see this guy talking to the store manager. The store manager looks at me, says something to the guy, turns around, and goes into his office. So I'm like, well, maybe he's grabbing some paperwork. You know, I can't imagine he would be stupid enough to... Not actually come talk to me. So, uh, guy comes back up and goes, "Yeah, I spoke to the store manager, and he um, he's busy. He doesn't have time to talk to you." And I was like, "So let me get this right. So my car gets damaged at your facilities, and your store manager doesn't have time to come talk to me. Is is that what you're telling me?" He was like, "Yes, sir, but he'll take your name and number." I was like, I'd like to give your store manager my name and number to his face. I was like, so, so why don't you take your, I I swore at the guy. I felt a little bad about that. Now that I'm calmed down a little bit, not much, but I was like, why don't you take your little skinny white self, your mousy looking self back there and get your store manager or I'm going to come back there and get your store. I already told you. I will do it. I don't even care. You call the cops right now. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to drag your store manager outside so he can take a look at my car. That your store damaged. And so one of the cooks who was flipping burgers says, sir, can you calm down? And I was like, why don't you come out here and make me calm down? I was like, am I talking to you? I'm not talking to you. Why don't you take your little spatula, flip some more burgers, drop some more fish in the grease, and shut up. I was like, I'm not talking to you. And if you want to come out here and look at my car, you come out and look at my car. Or if you want to come out here and try to make me shut up, why don't you try to make me shut up? Come on. I'm waiting right here. And so this other manager who, I don't know, maybe he's a shift manager, he turns around and says, sir, there's no need. And I was like, there's no need for what? For ice to be falling off your roof and hitting my car and shattering my window? You're absolutely correct. There is no need for that. So unless you have anything productive that you're about to say, I would recommend you shut your mouth. So then, this other guy in the back, he turns and looks at me and I'm like, what? You got something to say too? So then I literally pointed at every single individual behind the counter and was like, unless one of you has anything productive to say or is going to come and take the information off my car or come outside and scrape the snow off the roof right now, I don't want to hear another freaking word from any one of you until I speak with the manager or I swear on all that is holy, help me God, I will come back there and red palm every single one of you. And so the manager then at that point comes out of his office and yells. Excuse me, sir. Can you keep your voice down? Can we remain calm? That's when I grabbed the tray that was sitting in front of me and literally tossed it down the aisle, like right at him. I was like, you're such... Then I proceeded to call him all sorts of names and none of them were good and they all had to do with him being less than a man about how he had to stay 40 feet away from me to even talk to me, and he was sending this poor little guy who's now literally trembling in his boots to come talk to me. I was And I told him, like, you're a pansy, bro. Like, you, you're standing far away from me. You wouldn't even come talk to me. All I wanted you to do was come take a look at my car to see what happened. And, and like, you won't even do that. And he was like, well, well, yeah, I'm not coming up there unless you calm down. And I was like, dude, I would have been calmed if like you just came to talk to me the first time. We go outside and rashly talk about this while I show you the damage that you guys caused to my car. And uh, 
he was like, yeah, well, I'm not coming up there. And I was like, yeah, you, okay, you're, you're, and then I proceeded to give him a profanity, profanity laced rant. Um, someone was like, sir, we're going to call the cops. I was like, call the cops. I would love the cops to show up so I could show them what you did to my car and how you're not planning to helping me. And then I realized I was in Greece and how the Greece cops don't really like my type. So I decided it was a good idea to leave, but not before I grabbed a Coke and like chucked it. Like I literally grabbed a Coke and sprayed people behind the counter. And it was like, F all of y'all. I'll be back with a lawyer. <clears throat> wow. so, yeah, dude, I was like, you don't even know how pissed I was. So then now here's, here's the clincher though. Here's the funny part. I go outside. And the ice had rolled off my window and it wasn't shattered. <laughs> so, so, so that's a good thing. So you had yourself a good day. Uh, so I scraped the, the snow off the rest of my car. I inspected it. There didn't seem to be any real damage. Fortunately, there was like not even any, but you know what? When you're, when you're just pulling away and all of a sudden a bunch of stuff falls on your car out of nowhere. And it literally, the, the way the water hit my window with the ice, it literally looked like it spider webbed that portion of the window. So I honestly thought at the time that my window was shattered. And so, I, dude, I lost my mind. I ain't going to lie. Like, like I said, when you showed up at my house, um, I had not seen you look that angry ever. Yeah. I'm, was, still, I'm still pissed off. Yeah, during that story, I got to be no. honest, during, during the story, I got a little uncomfortable. Because you, you were getting a little, your your eyes were getting a little big, and your your head started to get a little, uh, you're, Red, you're, right. you're flush, you're a little no flush, doubt. dude. Well, you know what? It, it, it all I'd be, I would be as I would be as mad. Like that's the thing that like with my job, I work with people. I don't work at McDonald's. I work at a right. hotel, but you deal with people. So when there's problems that that you can solve or you can take care of, right? Even, with any job, really, but more uh, like in the in the in the customer service business. Try to solve the problem as quick as possible to, to de-escalate the situation. Don't throw gasoline on the fire. Right. Especially after seeing you. Yes. Like, yeah, I, if I if, if that was me, I would be terrified to talk to you. Right. But I'm thinking to myself, oh, hey, maybe I should say something now yes. to calm the situation. Maybe go outside and talk and, and, and check it out because that would make that would chill right. people out instead of just oh, dude, I, and, and you know what? Now that, I've, now that I'm, I'm a little calmer, I feel bad for the guy that I was dealing with. Because he was probably, like, a foot shorter than me. And and pretty skinny. So, I really, I kind of, I could tell that he was very intimidated. We have a dog here that does not respect us podcasting. Silly dog. Uh, so, I did feel bad for him. But if the manager had just come out and spoken with me, Absolutely. like I wanted... There would have not been the silliness that occurred. Well, hey, at least you got it out of your system. But here's the funny part. So I drive around the building as I'm leaving, and why is the manager walking out the back door with his book bag? So I stop, and I'm like, oh, you didn't have time to come talk to me because you were you were off duty? Is that what it was? I was like, I see how it is. So I start to get out of my car. He jumps in his car, and, dude, he pulled away like he was part of Furious, Fast and Furious 7. I mean, like, smoked the tires, chirped them like he was gone. I was like, yeah, you freaking pansy. You're an intimidating man. Oh, dude, I was pissed. While uh, while we're at it, because we didn't have an introduction, like we didn't start, we'll start we'll start the podcast again uh, next segment. But I want to ask you. Yes. Now that we've got you back, welcome back. Thank you. Off. I was Who, here last week. You no, know I'm saying welcome back. Like right, you, right. You, you weren't you when you got here. You're yes. really mad. Yeah, so yeah. I'm glad we got out of the system. Got right. you back to normal. Uh, so welcome. Thank you. But uh, who do you want to say hello to this week? Oh, you know what? This week, I'd like to say hello to Ronda Rousey. Because, let's be honest, she's she's a badass. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into it because that's part of something I wanted to ask you during the news segment, which usually I would have already asked you, but because we wanted to get... I, right, don't want right. you, I don't want you being distracted. Okay. The last I thing I want is you being distracted here at the podcast, right. the, the, the Wolf Den studio. So, um, Yeah, Ronda Rousey. We'll talk more about that next segment. That's a good cliffhanger. Nice. Uh, I we, like it. When we get back from these commercial breaks... News you need to know. I'll probably never be able to set foot in that McDonald's again. I'm sure they're going to have a picture of you. Or maybe you'll show up on the news later. <laughs> that that maybe a would drawing suck. of you. That'd be hilarious, though. Wanted. Right. Luis Perez. 
Well, hey, then when you got here, there was a phone call and you went off on a guy. I got to watch that. That was a lot of fun. We're just having a, it's a good day. It's a good day to be Mr. Perez. More of the Better Life Than Dead podcast when we get back here on the Gear Radio Network. While you're listening to this podcast, make sure you follow us on social media. You can follow me at WolfSHC on Twitter. You can also follow Mr. Perez at MRLG Perez. Make sure to like the podcast on Facebook. That's facebook.com backslash BLTD podcast. And make sure to follow Gear Network on Twitter at GERE Network. Don't believe me, just watch. Hi, Gear Network listeners. The song of the month was selected by Better Live Than Dead's Ryan Wolf. It is Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars. And if you like this song, you can purchase it through our Gear Network link from both Amazon and iTunes. Right now, if you head to gearnetwork.com, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial of Amazon Prime, which includes Prime Music. You'll be able to listen to this and other songs from Amazon Music's vast collection of songs as often as you would like. Or if you just want to download the song, you can purchase it for $1.29 on both Amazon and iTunes right from our website. Your purchase continues to support our free program. Remember, that is GearNetwork.com, powered by Amazon and iTunes. Back here on the Better Live Than Dead podcast. I need a cigar. I need a beer. That's a bourbon. I need I need a beer right now. Or some rum. That's that's for sure. Or some scotch. Something something good. Something alcoholic. Something good and heavy, right? <laughs> uh, right now. Fortunately, fortunately I, I have a lot of both of those things. Absolutely. And it's good to have them. Yes, it is. Right now we are at the News You Need to Know segment, so we're just going to start off right from the top. Major League Baseball. News You Need to Know. Chicago White Sox pitcher Chris Sale fractured his foot, stepping off his truck. He's out at least three weeks. He was stepping off his truck. Stepping off his truck. He said it was more like a sprained ankle. No, is it just me or does every every spring season, every spring training, there always seem to be one or two players that get injured doing the most mundane activities? Well, that's what I always tell you, Perez. There's the, the, the two things I like about spring training is – I'm trying to get my damn microphone here right. The two things I like about spring training <laughs> is guys that are in the best shape of their life – and guys every single year and guys always get hurt yes stupidly that's a true story never dude. fails never ever fails i'm trying to make sure our levels are good we're good everything looks good i'm not going to get ahead of myself that's a true story speaking of the white Sox, legend Minnie minoso passes away at 89 rest in peace tigers detroit tigers pitcher joel hanrahan uh, he was cut after tests reveal he needs a second tommy john surgery the first one apparently never healed properly never okay. took so, unfortunately, he has to go back and get that taken care of again. Right. Here's an interesting story. The Chicago Cubs considered playing home games in Milwaukee this season because the construction of their stadium is slow. <laughs> they, they took left field bleachers, right field bleachers out, and because it's been such a harsh winter, they've had trouble reinstalling them, the new ones. Uh, so, I believe right now, like, they're playing, they're opening the season, Major League Baseball season on Sunday Night Baseball, uh, literally the first game of the season. And uh, there's going to be no one in left or right field. And I don't think center field either. I think it's just going to be like a minor league stadium. <laughs> that's awesome. But, I mean, when it's done, it's going to be gorgeous. And by awesome, I mean, that sucks. But, yeah, they're, they're losing out on a little a little bit of money right there. That's crazy. Well, it has been a harsh winter, though. Yeah, and it, they're in Chicago. Right. And Chicago's, it, it, they're, they're already the Windy City. But, you right. know, the winter we've had. They haven't had news. quite the snowfall that we've had, but. The Arctic temperatures. The Arctic, in in yeah, February. The temperature's February, been bad. February was, I think, one of the worst winter months we've had in a while. Yeah, it was cold. Uh, San Francisco Giants lose outfielder Hunter Pence six to eight weeks after he was hit by a pitch. Excuse me. He has a non-displaced ulna fracture. That sucks. It does not sound good. No. And they came across the line this morning uh, after being pulled. I think he threw 12 or 13 pitches in his first spring start. He had uh, tricep tightness. Uh, Texas Rangers pitcher Hugh Darvish has a sprained UCL. There's a possibility he's out at least four months, but they're saying he could just get Tommy John surgery, continuing the Major League Baseball epidemic of pitchers needing Tommy John surgery. That's crazy. Bad for Texas, but, hey, it might be good for the Philadelphia Phillies because uh, Cole Hamels is still available. True. And Texas has some nice prospects. Red Sox won't pay the price, so maybe Texas does. 
It's very possible. Moving over to NASCAR now, charges will not be filed on uh, Kurt Busch after he was uh, allegedly had beat his girlfriend. His uh, assassin girlfriend. His assassin girlfriend. But the reinstatement process is still unknown for Kurt Busch. NASCAR says he will be reinstated at some point, but they did not lay out the process. I'm assuming he's going to have to jump through some hoops. And, hoops, and yeah, absolutely. Maybe go to some counseling or some, some care and, and, and right. speak out for uh, uh, against that because clearly... Um, Something did happen. Right. They just don't have enough evidence to charge him. Right. Because NASCAR said, you know, we know we were there. We saw the evidence. We heard the evidence. So he's going to start appearing to some of those yeah. we, NFL-style commercials before knows? NASCAR. Maybe. Yeah. It's the first time NASCAR has ever had an, a, a domestic assault situation. So that we know of. Well, that's been... They, there was one with Travis Quapple, but he was never suspended. NASCAR was vilified for it. So they, right. they didn't want that to happen again. Moving over to the UFC now, as Perez mentioned before the break, Ronda Rousey. She defeats Kat Singano in 14 seconds. Is there 14 any, seconds. Any woman, the length of an Instagram video. Right. Is there any woman who can defeat Ronda Rousey? At this point, I don't no, know. Actually, actually I'll just, I'm just going to cut to the chase. I'm sorry to cut you off, Perez, but I'm going to cut to the chase. Can Chris Cyborg beat uh, Ronda Rousey? I don't think so. I, I think Cyborg is physically more imposing than Ronda, but I believe Ronda's ground game and her mental game is stronger. Her judo is amazing. Her judo is amazing. And frankly, the way that she was able to get into that arm bar from the position that she was on, uh, on Cat, was amazing. She's never, she's not faced. She's always thinking 10 steps ahead. Yeah, exactly. The so, thing about it with, with Cat, with, uh, well, not Cat with Zingano. I hope Cat Zingano gets another fight because Cat Zingano. Rondo is, says she'd give her a rematch. Cat Zingano probably to this point is her most talented opponent she's Absolutely. ever faced. But. I, I really think Cyborg won't end up in the UFC just because she has to gain. She'll have to put on or lose weight, I believe. She'll she's, lose she's weight. She's 145 and it's she's, 135. Yeah. Uh, and, so and, she, and Ronda already said she's not going to fight her unless she makes weight. Well, and that and that Chris Cyborg might not even be able to pass drug tests. Right. Because that's she's true had too. problems in the past with, with getting popped. And right. We all see her physique. You know, it's sometimes she's people scary. can do that, but then again, sometimes it might be a little aided. So yeah. we'll see how that works out. But uh, I hope it happens. Me too. Because uh, Ronda Rousey is tearing through, and that's that for Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is Floyd Mayweather to uh, Chris Cyborg being her Manny Pacquiao. She yeah, has right, they have right, right, to fight right. each other. I'm not saying they're the same type of person because Floyd Mayweather is a piece of crap. Yes, but I agree. Um, in in comparison terms, they have to fight at some point in time. You would think you that would was, think that was like with Gina Carano back in the day before she left and became a movie star. Right, she had to fight a specific person to make it like. Yes. Like, she may fight Ronda Rousey in the future. That, I heard that rumor, which, which would, would be, be good. Which would be very good. Yeah. I mean, Although, I think I think Ronda Rousey is just going to mow through everything. She even said she could beat most bantamweights, which... Which is probably true. Probably, yeah. Which is probably true. I mean, I mean Dana, uh, Dana White came out and said that she might have to fight men at one point. Well, they said... Uh, the, the other thing I want to mention before we move on, uh, they mentioned that they have a date set at Madison Square Garden later this year. They may... Now that Sheldon Silver's out, the, the man who has been... Uh, lobbying against UFC, uh, he's out. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, apparently he's he he got arrested for accepting a lot of money and bribes and stuff. And if he's out, they may be able to get the UFC legalized in New York State. They want to have be awesome. They want to yeah, absolutely. They want to have a fight at Madison Square Garden with a huge main event. Rumors either have John Jones in a super fight against Chris Weidman or John Jones in a super fight against Cain Velasquez. I think. The Weidman super fight would most likely happen because right. they're they're close to the same weight, right? But they're both also from the area. True, true. Which would be that'd be awesome. Madness. That'd be awesome. Madness. Moving over to the NCAA now. Are we going to talk about Ronda Rousey beating up that reporter? Oh God! Because come on, that was awesome. Sorry, yeah, I I forgot. Uh, that was awesome. Don't tell Ronda Rousey you're stronger than her and she can't beat up a man because she will judo throw you, judo toss you. He literally said, even though I'm a white belt. I could probably beat you because I'm a man and I'm stronger. And then she, tossed and then she a, broke his ribs, tossed the judo throw, and he was he was grunting like a little baby. Yo, he literally broke some ribs. Yeah, like she landed on top of him, and that was the end of it. Yeah, I laughed extremely hard. That was amazing, and that is why I was saying hi to Ronda Rousey. She's powerful. She's hot and she's a badass. I agree. Moving over to NCAA now, for real this time. I didn't mean to cut you off there. I'm sorry. First off. I wasn't saying anything. No, I beforehand. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. You want to talk about Ronda Rousey? I got to check my phone, so I'm going to talk and I'm going to ask you a question while I check this. Syracuse had sanctions placed on them 
uh, this week. They lost a bunch of scholarships, and Jim Beheim lost a handful of victories. And Appar- he's suspended for nine games next year. Appar- uh, nine ACC games. Nine Apparently ACC what games, yeah. happened was uh, they were illegally doing homework for players to keep players eligible while yes. players played basketball. What do, you, what do you think of this? I think it's a cop-out. I, 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 to me, uh, some of the things that I've been seeing about this says that Jim Beheim wasn't aware of some of the stuff that was going on. So, uh, you know, suspending him for nine ACC games next season and then vacating some of his wins to me is just ridiculous. Yeah, but then again, it was it was his it's his team and he it's his program. He needs to kind of he should know. He needs to be the leader of the program. So essentially, what they said is that there was kind of a lot of bad things going on, and Jim Beheim kind of was just like whatever. Yeah, no, I understand that, but at the same time. He he can't take he can't be aware of every little thing that goes on, and, and the people above him would also know this stuff. So I feel like they need to be held accountable. Also, I, I don't really have an issue with the the vacating the wins. Uh, it sucks, but at the same token, I feel that the NCAA has such a lock on how things happen that certain things. Uh, what they punish people for are just silly. Um, so what? They were helping people do homework and, and pass their assignments. Who cares? Well, no, 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 I'm turning the TV on real quick, but the rumor was that they were actually doing, doing it for him. Oh, yeah, I know. So you know what? Sometimes you need to do homework for some of these people. The, the level of education on some of these individuals that come up to the next level is not where it should be. So I really don't have an issue with it. Okay. That's just me. Uh, I was going to say I'm turning the TV on right now because because it appears that there are 47 seconds left. in, uh, Or maybe it just went final. Either way. Yeah, it went final. Uh, Kentucky. Did they lose? Just beat Florida. Oh, okay. They're 31-0. and That's awesome. Can they run the table? I think it's going to be very difficult to run the table. Running the table during the regular season is is easier than during the postseason, simply because you're going to be playing some teams that you may not actually see during the regular season who may be as good as you, and you may not have time to really game plan for them. If Kentucky runs the table, that would be incredible. But, but if, if any team... This year has the talent. It would be Kentucky. That's a disgusting team right now. That's true. They could probably beat certain NBA teams. The only stat I have is that the fourth team to go thirty and zero. I'm not sure about thirty one and zero, but I assume they would be the fourth team to go thirty one and zero as well. Um, but I, I don't want to say that and not confirm it. Moving over to the MLS real quick. Uh, the league reaches a new CBA. The season will begin Saturday night as planned. Uh, in the NBA, Thunder guard Russell Westbrook fractures his cheekbone, only missed four days, and then in his return, no big deal. He went 49-16-10. That's 49 points, 16 rebounds, 10 assists. That dude's a beast. He's on fire this year. He's a horrible dresser, but he's a beast. He looks like a Ninja Turtle. He's, yeah. Free agent Ray Allen will sit out this season, may return next year. Uh, he has not ruled out retirement, but then again... It's time to retire. He might. It might be time for him to retire. I think last year he had the worst shooting percentage of his career, or something like that. It's time for him to retire. The Denver Nuggets fire Brian Shaw after going 56-85 and in one and a half seasons with him. Uh, JaVale McGee, McGee, who was just acquired from Denver, has been bought out in uh, Philadelphia. And just a couple days ago, Portland's Wesley Matthews tears his Achilles tendon. Apparently, they called Ray Allen to gauge his interest in, in seeing if he would be willing to come to Portland. That would be a good spot for him. I mean, I felt bad for the guy. I saw that footage. Of what he, All he did was take a step. That's all, that's all it takes. You know, and, and immediately went down. That's a that's a big loss for Portland. And I hope the guy is able to recover properly. Moving over to the National Hockey League right now. Jay McClemon in Carolina, Matt Zuccarello uh, in the New York Rangers, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, Cam Atkinson all resign uh, contracts before the trade deadline, so they weren't traded. Boston resigns Tory Krug and Riley Smith to extensions. And uh, in case you missed it, the trade deadline happened, and I have a folded list here of deals, and I'm going to run through all of them really quick. Anaheim traded Ben Lovejoy to Pittsburgh. Anaheim traded Renee Bork, William Carlson for James Wisniewski. 
Uh, and then they got Corbinian Holzer in another deal. And they also uh, acquired Tomas Fleischmann earlier in the week. Arizona traded uh, Zibanek. I, I always screw this guy's name up. <laughs> Zibanek McCallick to, uh, and I apologize, it's going to sound terrible, but it is what it is. They trade him to St. Louis. And they also uh, acquire local product David Leggio for uh, for minor for the minor leagues. Nice. Boston trades Jordan Caron for Maxime Talbot and uh, a, a minor deal Jared Knight for Zach Phillips to Minnesota. Or Jared Knight to Minnesota for Zach Phillips. Buffalo traded Tory Mitchell, Michael Neuvirth, Chris Stewart, and Brian Flynn for uh, a couple pro- uh, a prospect, a couple picks, and Chad Johnson, who was out for the season, it appears, after hurting himself yesterday. Uh, Calgary traded Savan Barch to Vancouver for a draft pick. Barch goes uh, Barshki, sorry, Barshki goes to uh, the minor leagues to help out Utica. Chicago acquires Andrew Desjardins and Antoine Vermet. I'm always bad at pronouncing hockey names. I deal. I thought so that much, was Desjardins. I, I deal so much with hockey, but I'm so bad at pronouncing the names. Uh, Columbus traded Jordan Leopold to Minnesota, which was interesting because his daughter actually wrote a note to the Blue Jackets pleading that they uh, trade their father home because he lives in Minnesota and they, right. were, they were sad without their father, and it ended up working out. Aww. Detroit acquires Eric Cole. Edmonton trades Jeff Petrie, uh, the Petri dish, to Montreal. Uh, Merrick Zidlitsky traded to Detroit. Corey Conacher, another local product, traded to Vancouver, goes to Utica. Philadelphia traded Braden Coburn uh, to Tampa Bay for Radko Gudis and uh, first and third round pick. Uh, Ian Cole goes to Pittsburgh for Robert Bortuzzo. Keith Yandel and James Shepard go to the Rangers. Uh, St. Louis acquired Ole Okunin. San Jose acquires uh, or sends Tyler Kennedy to the Islanders for conditional draft pick. Tampa Bay trades Brett Connolly to Boston. Washington acquires Tim Gleason, Curtis Glenn, Cl- Glenn Cross, and Winnipeg acquires Lee Stepniak. Now, that was a lot of trades. A lot of trades. Holy Very busy cow. day. And some injuries now to point out before we move over to the National Football League. Going a little fast because there's a lot here to talk about. Uh, Calgary's Mark Giordano tears his bicep tendon. Columbus Blue Jackets newly acquired David Clarkson tears his oblique. He's out for the season. Giordano's also out for the year. Uh, Boston's Brett Connolly, who had not played a game yet, broke a finger and took a shot off his hand in practice, broke a finger, out for six weeks. Colorado uh, sensation... Nathan McKinnon broke his foot, and Dustin Bufflin out a few weeks with an upper body injury. Now, injuries, as I just mentioned, are a thing of the game. Yes. Last week, the Florida Panthers lost two goaltenders in one game. Roberto Luongo took a shot off the shoulder, was out. Then came in Al Montoya backup. He hurt his groin. He was out. I believe it was his groin or his knee. And then uh, Al Montoya stuck in and dealt with it while they looked for a third emergency goaltender, which was the assistant coach. Which was a player. They tr- dressed the player up. The assistant coach then got dressed up. Then Luongo came back in and finished the game. I mention this because Florida is going to maximize the publicity on this one. It's right. called goal of a lifetime. You show up at practice. The goaltending coach will analyze your, your style of, of play. And then they pick two people out. Those two people will go uh, head-to-head in a shootout in the first period of a, of a game. After the first period of a game, an intermission against Florida alum, Florida Panther alumni. Right. The guy who stops the most shots wins. The winner gets two tickets to remaining Florida Panther home games, a team signed jersey, <laughs> and an intermission spot during the team's broadcast to discuss being the winner of this contest. Also, you get to participate in practice with the Florida Panthers. That's which, pretty cool. Which is really cool. Very good on them. Moving over to the National Football League now. A lot of cuts this week. Teams trying to get under the cap. Lance Moore cut in Pittsburgh. Cortland Finnegan, Miami. What I'm going to do is I'll just say the player name and then the team that they're cut from. So I'll just, just to make it quicker. Lance Moore in Pittsburgh. Cortland Finnegan, Miami. Kerry Williams in Philadelphia. Trent Cole in Philadelphia. Chris Myers in Houston. Pierre Thomas in New Orleans. Vince Wilfork in New England, who had his option declined. Lamar Woodley in Oakland. Nick Roach in Oakland. Usama Young in Oakland. Zach Miller in Seattle, and Philip Wheeler in Miami. Contract extensions coming across the board. Cole Beasley re-ups in Dallas. Ray Malaluga in Cincinnati. Greg Olson in Carolina. Uh, David Harris uh, in New York Jets. Matt Prater in Detroit. Miles Paul in Washington. Derek Newton in Houston. Tyson Aluwalu in Jacksonville. Doug Free in Dallas. And Beast Mode is back in the National Football League, at least for another year. Marshawn Lynch re-signs. A lucrative contract extension with the Seattle Seahawks. 
Yeah, Seattle wasn't going to let him go. Well, it wasn't. I don't know if it was much as they didn't want to let him go, as if uh, he wanted to retire. And he was actually in Turkey this week and mentioned he wanted to come back, and also said, "I was expecting the ball, the final play of the game." Yes, he did say that. Franchise tags: Justin Houston in Kansas City, Demarius Thomas in Denver, Des Bryant in Dallas, which means that Demarco Murray is going to be a free agent. Uh, John, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul in New York, uh, the Giants. Stephen Guskowski in New England. Charles Clay in Miami gets the transition tag. Uh, and a couple free agent deals to pass along. Brad Jones signs in Philly. Darnell Dockett jumps ship and goes to San Francisco. Jerome Simpson, uh, the man who did the crazy flip when he was with the Bengals. Also the man who had a ton of marijuana mailed to his house in a FedEx box. <laughs> Jacoby Jones of Dancing with the Stars fame signs in San Diego. And Michael Michael Orr of uh, Blindside fame signs in Carolina. Speaking of... Uh, Players on the move. Jonathan Massaqua, 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 claimed by Tennessee. Uh, Maurice Jones Drew, Drew retired this week with the Oakland Raiders. He had a good career. It was time for him to go. 29 years old. It tells you how, how short the shelf life is for running backs in this league. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Reggie Wayne won't be back in Indianapolis. Reports were that he wanted to play one more year with uh, Indianapolis and then retire. Houston grants Andre Johnson the right to seek a trade after asking him to take a pay cut because he wouldn't be a starter. He laughed in their face reportedly. Literally laughed in their face. He still can be an impact player, he thinks. I'm sure if you get him a good quarterback, he will be good somewhere. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The Raiders re-up their ODOT Co. Coliseum lease for one year. It appears they're going to stay in Oakland a little longer than just this year. There, there's talks that this may be signs of things warming up between each side. They may end up getting a longer deal. Uh, Brandon Marshall. They need, to do, they need to do something about that. Brandon Marshall dealt to the New York Jets. And yes, I agree with you about Oakland. They they need, they to, need to do something about that stadium. stadium. It's just it's, it's been around forever. It's a bad it stadium. It's time to upgrade or something or move them. Yeah, Brandon Marshall, real quick, dealt to the Jets. What do you think? I I think it's going to help the Jets to win one more game a year. <laughs> I don't really think it's going to affect them. Brandon Marshall is pretty much. At the end of his career, you know, I mean, he's still an effective player. Yeah, but but it's he's he's getting to the point where he's going to have to ride off soon into the sunset. So I really don't see it being as helpful as people may think. Well, it allows them to cut Percy Harvin, which gives them a ton of cash. That's true because he's a big hit next season. But if they cut him, they don't owe him money. Also, last but not least, you know, you know, Leron Landry, yes, big muscle head, uh-huh. shockingly. Shockingly, after being suspended four games during the season, a 10-game suspension for a PED positive test. Personally, I'm shocked. Some people just don't get it. No. Some people just don't get it. You don't need to be that big to play football. No. You're, you're, you know that you're jeopardizing not only your career, but your paydays by doing this stupid thing. Exactly. Uh, you, People are just, it's stupid. Don't it's be dumb. stupid. Moral of the story. It's dumb. It's dumb. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know we kind of rushed the end of it, but uh, got a lot of good talk coming up. We want to get to it. I'm very eager to discuss some more football news. Football? But first, I must say, this is the news you need to know. Now you know it. Coming up next, National Hockey League Talk. Segment with myself and a good friend of the podcast, Brayton Wilson of... WBNY's Neutral Ice and SabersHockeyCentral.com. Awesome. Stay tuned. That comes up next. And then after that, Perez and myself, we will be back. The Buffalo Bills made two big moves this week. We're going to break it down. We're going to talk about it with a very special guest analyzer in the segment. As well as Perez and I are going to predict the landing spot for some of the biggest free agents with free agency just a few days away. Stick around. More of the Better Live Than Dead podcast right after this. Listen in. This free and independent sportscast is made possible when you shop the Gear Network store through Amazon. Visit GearNetwork.com and click on the Amazon banner to shop through Amazon's thousands of products at great prices delivered right to your front door. Again, that's GearNetwork.com and click the Amazon banner at the top. Perez, I must ask you. Whoa, wait, what did I ask you? How did you do this year in fantasy football? Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Well, guess what? I don't want to talk about it, man. I've got good news for him. What? 
FanDuel yes. allows you to win all that money back that you lost. That's good because I lost a lot of money. In fantasy football, but, th- but here's the catch. What's the catch? Fantasy hockey, fantasy basketball, one week leagues. That doesn't Three sound like a catch to me. You can win a lot of money. I like that. Just like you did with the fantasy football and FanDuel, you can win it with hockey, with basketball. Check it out, gearnetwork.com backslash FanDuel. You get the money on FanDuel. You help us out over at the Gear Network. We get money, you get money. Everybody's happy, and Perez is happy because he won all that money back. For well, us, yeah, I'll be real happy with that. Fantasy football, which he lost because, well, Perez is really bad at fantasy football. Oh, man, don't even talk about it. Hello out there. We're on the air. It's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps, and the players bump, and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Back here on the Better Life Than Dead podcast, joining us now on the FanDuel Hotline, he is the co-host of Neutral Ice on 91.3 WBNY, as well as a writer for SabresHockeyCentral.com. He is Brayton Wilson. Now, Brayton, before I let you say hello to the wonderful podcast land, I must say, not only can you follow, but you should be following Brayton on Twitter at BJ Wilson SHC with that introduction. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm doing good. It just seems like that you can't get enough of me. You know, I was going to say, I, I don't think the people of the podcast know at this point in time uh, exactly how much we've talked and hung out this week. But at this point, you know, we're probably pushing, I would say, well over, I don't know, 15 hours of, of talking about hockey, about hanging oh, yeah. out and just doing hockey work. So that's why I have yeah. you on the podcast this week. I mean, I mean yeah, we spent, we spent, you know, what, probably a good seven, eight hours covering the trade deadline. And then even when we got home, it was like one or two in the morning and we ended up talking trade deadline stuff again. Well, it's just all part of the hustle, man. We gotta, we gotta keep it up. And there's a lot of people out there in the uh, in internet land that really do value our opinions. So we have to, we have to keep up our appearances and, and, and keep the podcast fresh over uh, at SabersHockeyCentral.com. And uh, we also just have to just sit around and talk about hockey because that's that is a lot of fun. Absolutely. Now, speaking of the National Hockey League, uh, the reason you are here this this afternoon. Uh, I do want to ask you first off, what were your impressions of the of the trade deadline? Now that all is said and done, and the dust is settled, and we've had a, a a couple games for for players to settle into their new roles. Right. Yeah. Um, well, you can definitely tell from the trade deadline who are the buyers and who are the sellers. Uh, the Buffalo Sabers and the Arizona Coyotes were the definition of sellers, and the definition of buyers. Were, uh, were was a team like the Chicago Blackhawks, where they went out and got you know Kimo team and in those got Antoine Vermette, uh, the Rangers, where they got Keith Yandel from the Coyotes. I mean, um, you know, the trade deadline this year was very, very you know buyer seller, just evenly split sort of thing. Like you could tell who was a buyer and who was a seller compared to other years, where it's like you know we don't know if this team's going to be a seller or a buyer, or we don't know if this team's going to be a seller or a buyer. So. Um, but this year, definitely, you tell like who was trying to sell, who was trying to buy, um, and, and especially like a team like the Leafs, where they were trying to sell, but every but everybody was at such a high value that they couldn't really sell at all. So, well, for stuff like that too, uh, before I ask you the next question, I was going to ask you stuff like that, and you and I both know this very well. Uh, and Tim Murray mentioned this as well in his press conference following the trade deadline that. Uh, there's there's part trades part digging digging the ditches for future trades so so there may be a trade that happens in June or July where a general manager or Tim Murray uh, of the Sabers will say yeah uh, this deal almost happened at the deadline in March but obviously we couldn't swing it because uh, we couldn't do this or this couldn't work or that whatever whatever the case may be you'll you'll probably hear and even we heard. Uh, like with the Evander Kane deal where Tim Murray said, you know, I, I've been contacting this guy on and off for three years. He knows what I want. That's all you do. Sometimes the deadline may be making blockbuster deals. Sometimes the deadline is making blockbuster phone calls and, and just letting people know what you want, uh, what you're willing to give up. And then you sit on it. You let it linger for a few months and then they make them calling and say, hey, you you really want that guy still? Because we'll totally do that trade now. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, we saw with the Evander Kane trade. I mean, Tim Murray said he was talking for years about Evander Kane. 
and wanting to acquire him, even when he was with the Senators. And then he comes into Buffalo and says, you know, hey, are you still interested in giving up Kane or anything like that? And then when the whole uh, situation where the tracksuit and throwing it in the shower situation came up where Kane was having shoulder surgery and he wasn't going to be playing, but still he was available, Tim Murray's like, you know what, I'm taking advantage of that. You know, let's let's make a deal. And they ended up making a deal, and it I think it benefits the Buffalo Sabres in the long haul. Um, for the Jets, it, it benefits them right now. But, yeah, like you said, it just it, it may take years. It may take just a couple of days to discuss a deal, but – uh, this year's trade deadline was was quite interesting to see how deals were, were made, how deals were, have panned out. And, uh, you know, especially this year where it's, you know, a seller's market and a buyer's market, the, the clear cuts. Um, it was intriguing to see how this trade deadline went down. Especially because you called the Max Talbot deal to Boston, and then I kind <laughs> of I kind of called the, uh, the way that Tim Murray dealt Chris Stewart. You just flat out said – Jordan Curran is being traded. I, I, I think that uh, that would be good to go to Colorado for Max Talbot. And then yeah. that happened. And then I yeah. sat there and I sat there and said to you and uh, to another blogger, a uh, friend of ours, that uh, you know I, I really wonder if Tim Murray may have called earlier today and said, you know, this is what I want. Tell me what you can give me. And then he went and circled around last minute. And come to find out, Murray made the phone call three minutes before the deadline uh, hit. The deadline clock struck zero and made the deal for Chris Stewart. So, I guess we're both pretty uh, we were we were pretty pretty hot that day. We're on fire if we're talking NBA Jam. We were on fire with our with our calls that day. <laughs> yeah, every time every time that we sent out a tweet, it was just on just blazing on fire, just like NBA Jams. Well, we are not we are not some members of the Buffalo media. That is for sure. I, I, there are some guys out there that uh, I don't want to mention any names because I'm not sure if they're listening. I don't want to make anybody mad, but. Uh, Friends of friends of ours will know when we talk about the the, the the fire tweets. They'll know what we're talking about and who we're talking about. And uh, you and myself were very very lucky to have uh, seen a local member of the media shooting off some scalding hot takes. And we are uh, we are very very pleased to have been in that room and, and witnessed the. Uh, I don't even know the the word if the word exists. Idiocy, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Um, stupidity. I think, I think you, I think you hit it right on the dot. No, I mean with that, with that specific media member. Yeah, that was, um, scolding hot takes might be a, might be the kindest way to put it. White, white hot takes. Now, before we get ourselves, before we get ourselves in trouble, Brayton, uh, I do want to ask you, uh, who do you think were the, the big winners of the trade deadline this year? Well, I think I mentioned it earlier. the The Coyotes or the Coyotes were able to trade, you know, two key pieces of their team to probably the biggest winners of the trade deadline: Chicago and the New York Rangers. Uh, you know, Chicago acquires Antoine Vermette, uh, a very very skilled forward who can play center, who can play wing. He he wins you key faceoffs that you need to win. He he's just a guy that you can put in front of the net, and he can be able to find the loose puck and, and create a lot of chances. Antoine Vermette's going to be a huge part to the Coy- uh, not the, the Coyotes, but the, the Blackhawks within the last few months of the season. And I think it makes them a huge Stanley Cup contender adding Vermette, uh, especially to a team that's already stacked the way they are. And then the New York Rangers adding Keith Yandel to a defense that's already extremely, extremely good with Ryan McDonough, Jan Girardi, Mark Stahl, and a, f- and a few other guys that are just phenomenal in that New York Rangers defense core. Um, I think those are your two big winners, one from the East, one from the West, uh, that really have improved their chances astronomically to be a Stanley Cup contender this year and even contend for years down the road to come. I mean, you know, Van- Antoine Vermette's going to be a UFA come July 1st this year, but I, I – you know who knows who knows what the Chicago Blackhawks have in plan. Maybe they create some cap space to resign Vermette, um, or you know Vermette hits free agency and resigns in Arizona. There's been talks about that, but this this trade deadline again, the trade deadline, it's just you know who's the buyer, who's the seller, and, and the winners of the trade deadline were definitely um, the Coyote or the Chicago Blackhawks and the New York Rangers. Now speaking of the Arizona Coyotes, uh, they they kind of raised some red flags because obviously we all know that they are they're uh, as the media puts it, they're tanking. They they want to finish dead last. I, I I know I try to avoid the tanking thing because I don't want to be lumped in with everybody, but we have fun with it. I mean, we 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 get the the photoshops of the tanks with Tim Murray on them. It's a lot of fun. But 
Arizona didn't deal UFAs. They were, I mean, they, they dealt Vermette was a UFA, obviously, but the, but two of the guys they dealt had term, and they kept money. Do you have a problem with with Arizona doing that to to to, to get worse and get rid of players who have a term on their contract just so they could be a bad team? Well, no, I don't. I don't think it's a problem. It's you know. It's 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 just you know sort of the the risk that you try and take with trying to be the worst team in the league. I, I mean, you look at the Sabers. It's just like the Sabers got rid of Tory Mitchell, Chris Stewart, uh, Michael Neuvirth, who was their best goaltender probably all of this year. I mean, they were able to trade Jonas Enroth, but I mean, Michael Neuvirth in the past ten games, he was putting up better stats than Jonas Enroth was all year. Um, so I think that you know going back to the question. There's there's absolutely risk of, you know, trading away guys and retaining money. But, you know, the ultimate goal, especially for the teams who are trying to tank, are McDavid or Eichel. So, you know, I think that there's absolutely a risk. But if if that's what your goal is right now, then you got to shoot for it. Now, you mentioned the Buffalo Sabres. I cannot let you be on the podcast and make your better life than dead debut. Being a writer for Sabres Hockey Central, obviously, so I, I, I know you're good at talking about the Sabres, uh, mostly because I'm the one editing all of your articles that you post and, and recaps that you post. So I figure why I have you here, I might as well ask you, uh, what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts on, on how the Buffalo Sabres are playing recently? And uh, what are your thoughts on the immediate future of the Buffalo Sabres? Well, they're playing as bad as they can play. That's that's for sure. With uh, with the way that they not only played tonight, but the way that they've been playing since the trade deadline, or even before, after they traded Enroth and traded for Kane, they've been winning. But they have been playing very bad at the same time. They've been getting those really lucky wins. Um, tonight they went out, and got a two nothing lead on Ottawa, and they ended up losing it and losing three to two. Um, that's how it's going to be the rest of this season. This it's just the way it's going to be. This team is going to get those lucky fluky wins where they'll beat a good team, like, you know, three to two in a shootout or overtime or even a regulation. And then they'll play teams that are just as bad as they are. And they'll lose six to one to them. It's, uh, the last 17 games of the year are going to be very interesting to see how it's going to pan out because this team may play well in some of those games. This team may play absolutely horrible in the last few games. So, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to this season being over with and getting to, you know, April when they do the draft lottery night and seeing where the Sabres actually end up, whether they end up at number one or number two. Because I don't That's, think they're going to end up anywhere be, beyond number one or number two. Well, I was going to tell you, you know, someone I can't – and I, I feel really bad for, for forgetting uh, who said this on Twitter a couple of days ago go but it makes this whole process puts it into a, a very good light it's it's the essentially it's the the race for mc or the race for eichel with a shot at mcdavid because we all know if you finish 30th you, you have the best shot of getting mcdavid but historically teams who finish dead last don't get the first overall pick so you're, you're likely if you finish dead last you get jack eichel but uh, i know brayton you feel the same way i do either or i'll be totally fine with yeah yeah 100 percent and uh, I do want to mention, I do want to mention, uh, just for listening purposes, uh, it's Saturday, it's early Saturday morning at the time of this podcast, so obviously the Sabres play Sunday night against the Washington Capitals. So at the moment, um, the big news would be that uh, morning skate, the Buffalo Sabres announced that Chad Johnson uh, acquired from the Islanders in the deal for Michael Neuvert. Uh, he would start tonight, make his Buffalo Sabres debut, but apparently something happened in the morning skate uh, where he injured himself, injured uh, his lower body, and uh, apparently he is set to potentially miss the rest of the season. Uh, so that was fun while it lasted, I guess. <laughs> Anders Lindbeck and Andre Makarov is our starting goaltenders. Oh boy, that sounds like and a you know what? It, phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, it, it's the 17 games. It sounds a great way to spend the rest of the season, but here's another thing too. The uh, Kevin Klubge of the Democrat and Chronicle pointed out the Amherst have a weird, uh, a weird chunk of their schedule where they play one game in 13 days. So there's a strong possibility that Matt Hackett could be in uh, Washington tomorrow night with the with the Buffalo Sabers or coming up with the Buffalo Sabers sometime soon because obviously um, there's been a lot of talk of him playing seven games so they can he can be a, an, a restricted free agent instead of an unrestricted free agent. I don't think he gets there, but there's always a possibility. I mean, at this point, anything's possible with this with this hockey team. You know, we thought that uh, 
the Sabres right. have finished out the season with Gergensen's and Ennis getting 20 goals, and Gergensen's uh, rumored to have broken his foot or his ankle. We don't know. And it's right. like, you know, well, where where did the fun of the season go? <laughs> because obviously right now it's all about small victories. Got flushed right down the toilet. That's where it went. <laughs> exactly. We, we, we try to stay positive. We try to have fun with it. But um, do promise you that uh, – Things will get better for us. We will be happier in the in the near future, especially once this off season starts, because uh, there's a lot of money to be spent, a lot of trades to be made, a lot of teams to to pick out uh, to kind of pick from, you know, because of the the cap situation. Um, the Buffalo Sabers will likely acquire a goaltender either through free agency or a trade this this off season. So, a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm sure Brayton will have you on again sometime soon. Uh, that's for sure. Oh yeah, I can't wait. I I can't wait to be back on again. You sound, you sound fun. so you sound so excited to be here. It's it's two o'clock in the morning. It's you know. <laughs> before we let you go, man. I just want to uh, to mention again, uh, co-host of Neutral Ice on ninety one point three WBNY. I was there Monday night post deadline. Thank you again for uh, first off for having me. Yeah, Check absolutely. Out. You're Check welcome anytime to join. I do appreciate that. I will be back. I promise. I'll be back sometime soon. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, listen, I, I believe if the live feed's not down, they'll have it up on YouTube. But if the live feed is working, you can go right to WBNY's website and listen live. Also, check out SabersHockeyCentral.com. Brayton writes almost all the previews, does a bunch of recaps, writes articles here and there. He just had a recent article go up about Nick Baptiste, a Sabres prospect, playing in Erie with Connor McDavid. Uh, funny we mentioned that. That uh, game also, was fun. That was a fun game. I saw that. Yeah, absolutely. I saw that there was a, a lot of a big lead and then a lot of goals and then a little lead. And then Erie took back off and scored a lot more goals. And I, I figured you found, you picked the right game to go to that night. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, McDavid scored five points that night. I mean, it McDavid is the real deal for people who have not seen McDavid play before. And, you know, if they are asking, you know, what kind of player can McDavid be? In my personal opinion, and if this doesn't turn out, you can come back at me and, you know, whine at me all you want. Well, hey, David is going to be, be better than, than Crosby. It's going to be on the Internet, so you know it's going to be around forever and ever and ever. But oh, please, course, please, be, I'm sorry I cut you off. Please repeat that so we can get a clear cut audio of that. <clears throat> Connor McDavid is going to be better than Sidney Crosby. Fair enough. I love how you cleared your throat, too, to get to get the clear audio for me. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, no problem whatsoever. Now, uh, now, one last thing before we go. I have to pump your Twitter account. At BJ Wilson SHC on, uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, keep saying one last thing. The final thing, I have been practicing my radio voice. Uh, I will debut it sometime soon, but I'm working on it. From the diaphragm. I told you, from the diaphragm, you well, should bring up your voice. I'll tell you what. Everybody, Everywhere I go, I'm talking to people. Like I, when, the time I met Matthew Collar, uh, I sit down and talk to him, and I'm like, I can see where the voice comes from, but I just hear the normal voice. And then I hear him on the radio and I'm like, who is that guy? Or like you, you're sitting there and we're talking and all of a sudden you just like turned it up to 10. And I was like, oh, I forgot about that. You know, it's been a while since I've been on the radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been a little bit, but I mean, yeah, I mean, when uh, it's one thing, you may hear me talk like I am on the podcast, but then when I turn on the radio, it's like you almost you almost become a totally different person. Yeah, um too. Radio's fun. Radio is absolutely fun. If if anybody ever gets a chance to do radio work, um, you know, it's completely different, but it's it's absolutely fun. If you if you you can't go one day on the radio and then just like come out of it and say you didn't have fun. That's that's one thing I always knew is I had. That's why I do a podcast now because the I just love being in front of a microphone. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh especially with, you know, doing podcast stuff it's very similar to radio but um but you know there's i mean i love podcasting don't get me wrong i love podcasting with you i love podcasting with whoever it is that decides to invite me to a podcast but it's like there's nothing better than being on live radio and talking the way that you do on live radio and it's just like it's so fun it's absolutely so fun all right i must say I, i'm looking at this hockey stick now thank you again for the hockey stick by the way oh gosh yeah the autograph really little hockey stick and uh Thank you for you'll set it up in your you'll set it up in your podcasting room and it's um, actually leaning up against the wall right now in the in the in the Wolf Den studio right now. Yeah, but I mean, you, and you, I, I mean, we talked about it. You'll you'll probably set it up with some L hooks and everything like that. It's much better than it was sitting in my parents' closet. Well, I can see why I was in the closet. Yeah, for sure. 
but <laughs> it's 2.01 Eastern time on Saturday morning. So, Brayton, I want to say thank you again for joining me, and uh, go get some sleep. Yeah, I'll definitely try, and uh, thank you for having me again. Hope to be on with you once more. We'll have you sometime soon. Thanks again, man. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, you know, just just uh, one more thing, just for a free, free plug party. I've got a, a mock draft that I'm going to be posting on SabersHockeyCentral.com coming up within the next couple of days. And um, I, what the process that I did was I projected out every team's uh, results for the rest of the season, their playoff rankings. So I literally, you know, panned it out for you. And where I think everybody's going to finish, I'm going to have like a draft simulator to see who gets the first overall pick. We'll see how it goes, and then we'll go from there. And then, and then what? You cut out. I lost you. Oh, okay. Uh, and then we'll basically just go from there. I've got, okay. uh, I've got the, the the mock draft done. I just got to, you know, fake a do a simulator draft lottery where I just pick a name out of a hat basically and it's just like oh you know uh the devils win the draft lottery or some stupid crazy crap like that but um but we'll see what happens I mean I got it all done it's coming up within probably the next day or two on Sabres Hockey Central it'll be everywhere check it out thanks again for joining us man yeah thanks man thanks for having me Hey, Don, how's it going? Living the dream. I'm actually just getting ready to do this commercial. Oh, you mean the commercial where I tell our listeners to tune into Gear Network every week to listen to our show, Get Ready America, that one? Uh, yeah, John, that's the one. They can also listen to us talk about news, sports, whatever's on our minds, that... And a little of what's on our listeners' minds, but they're just too nice to say it. Well, that, Don, is a real humdinger. A humdinger. Come join us this and every week for Get Ready America exclusively on the Gear Radio Network. And the Gear Network app. A successful product does not become a successful product on its own. Look at the Gear Radio Network, for example. We're a prime example. We had a lot of help getting here, and we can help you get where you want to go, too. Advertising rates are very low to start off here on the Gear Radio Network. Visit us at gearnetwork.com. Click on the contact link to send us an email, and we can work out the details. Again, advertise your product across all of the forums at a low, low rate here on the Gear Radio Network. Welcome to, welcome back to Better Live Than Dead. Welcome to back to Better Live Than Dead too. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I kind of stumbled on my words it's right okay. there. It's okay, it's okay. I just, I was looking at some breaking NFL news. Ooh, what's breaking? So, uh, Doug Free from the Dallas Cowboys. Did you have him on your list of free agents? Did you listen to me last podcast, last segment? Of the no, podcast? I didn't listen to you. I mentioned it. Did you did you mention I, that he resigned? I did. That you know what, dude? I I'm was pretty sure I did. If I didn't, I wrote I, it down on the side. Maybe I didn't. I was looking at NFL news at one point, and so I kind of zoned out. I apologize. It's okay. I'm glad to see so, how you feel about about my news segment. If you did, if you did mention it, because it just happened literally today. Yeah. So good for you. I'm on top of things, dog. Good, I'm always man. on. I'm always on the tweet bots, tweeting about. See, I need to do that more often. Like I don't tend to pay attention to Twitter. Like, I tend to pay attention to, like, regular news and Instagram, but I'm hardly ever on Twitter, so I need to go on Twitter more. Twitter's a lot of fun, man. I'm glad that they, I'm glad the Cowboys re-signed Doug Free. I actually, this week, I have I got myself talking to a Sabres fan from Scotland and a Sabres fan from, uh, I think one was from Scotland and one was from Latvia or something like that. It's pretty cool stuff. Latvia. I think you said Latvia. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that last week. Uh, now, now you got me scrolling through Twitter, just clicking on stuff. This is fun. So yeah, I need to, I need to get on there. I need to, uh, I need to pay better attention to the Twitter because there seems to be a lot of news breaking on Twitter. I tend to rely on just regular news sources. Twitter is awesome. But now, before I get too wrapped up in the tweet bots, because that's what I'm doing, is I'm getting wrapped up now, checking out things and. Like earlier on Twitter, I asked people, I said, this is the kind of beer I like, what kind of, like if I go to look for IPAs or something, or um, whatever the other thing is, and uh, people were tweeting at me, telling me ideas to try out, and they said, well, if you like this beer, you might like that beer, and if you like that beer, you might like this beer, and 
Oh, that's pretty cool. A lot of good beer out there. It's very powerful, very powerful thing. I might go get some Sam Adams after this. Cherry wheat is delicious. I'm thinking about picking some up. Actually, they have a blackberry. Really? That is out of this world. Mm-hmm. I haven't had it in a while. Well, I might have to go get some. I might end up going to Wegmans and just making like your own, creating your own six pack and just grabbing, you know, uh, remember, push up at the bottom. I might go do like make your six pack and just throw like six beers in there and just come home and have a few. Yeah, but if you're going to do something like that, you should actually take the time to take a drive out the Henrietta and go like the beers of the world. Yeah, I, but I need to find like a beer that I'll, I I have a few friends that have already volunteered their time uh, in Buffalo. I said, if you want to come back to Buffalo, we'll sit down and we'll discuss. Um, and I do trust their beer opinion because they are involved with some good beer operations. But first, before we get too far off task. The National Football League. We said we said it was going to be gone for a while, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Right when you think they're gone, they pull you right back in. They get that hook right in your cheek, and you're like, back in like, it. Like we're fish? Like we're fish. Fish hook, dog. We're back here. Dogfish, dog. We're here. Football, <laughs> podcast, talking. Speaking of dogfish. Sports. If you like beer, Dogfish Head makes some really good beer. I heard about that, yeah. Just letting you know. The legal tampering... Legal, we call it legal tampering. That's the joke about it. It's like an oxymoron. It begins, uh, uh, it's Saturday, the 7th of March. So today, as we're recording the podcast, legal tampering begins. So Perez, a better time, no time like the present to get on Twitter and start looking through NFL stuff. And real quick, I have a bunch of Twitter lists if you want to follow them. I have a lot of people. I only follow like 450 people, but uh, I have Twitter lists with thousands of media members on it and news always is breaking. Yeah, dude, I need to do that. Absolutely but with, need to do but that. with the legal tampering in the next three days, we're going to be hearing a lot about a lot about um, guys going places, guys getting offers to go places, because free agency starts on, on the tenth, which is the new league year. Right. But speaking of the tenth, the Buffalo Bills, as of March tenth, will have two new players at least, as the Buffalo Bills acquire running back Lashawn McCoy, right, in what is said to be a blockbuster. It is not even said to be; it is. I. Well, Sean McCoy is not even happy about it. I either. yelled mother effer at my computer a couple times at work. I was so excited. Did you? And then they acquired quarterback Matt Castle, which we'll discuss in a second. But first, our guest speaker on the podcast this week. He has no idea he's doing it, but uh, <laughs> from the YouTubes, eat that 445. Sir, take it away with your analysis from an Eagles fan point of view. Of the LaShawn McCoy to Buffalo Bills deal for Kiko Alonso. Chip Kelly, what the f are you doing out there in Phil? What the f? What the f? Woo! What the f? Motherfucker, you better check your goddamn self, okay? You're fucking tripping, man. How the f do you release? No, 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 I'm sorry, nigga. You didn't fucking release him, nigga, man. Man, we stop fucking tripping. How the f? Do you trade LaShawn McCoy to the Buffalo fucking Bills for Kiko Alonso? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't that motherfucking injured last season? You trade LaShawn McCoy? Motherfucker, we don't even have a fucking running game now! Who the fuck is going to run the ball? Tell me that shit. Don't worry, I fucking wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Shut your bitch ass the fuck up. What the f*** are we going to do now? What the f*** are we going to do now? Hmm? I must say, that, I, was, that I would, was... I would I would really like to thank him for his brilliant insight into the situation. He did a good job. He, yeah, that really opened up my eyes. He brought some key points to the surface. He did. Um, he did. He did. Broke down some very interesting thoughts. And, Absolutely. And, and, and thank you again for that. Very nice. in-depth analysis of the situation. Absolutely. He, he hit the nail on the head. I'm surprised he has not been discovered yet. Now in the head, absolutely. Right. I think now, the mothership should pick him up. Absolutely, he's a he's a big, big uh, African American male who has a bedroom that has an Eagles jersey with his name on it. It appears in the background, so <laughs> he's like a super fan. Whatever works. I appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, now, man. thank you. From from my from my point of view, I was very pleased with this. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the Buffalo Bills Dude, reportedly that was offered. They reportedly offered C.J. Spiller $4.5 million per season. He declined, so the Buffalo Bills called him and said, thanks for everything, we're moving on. Uh, which 
with the acquisition of Matt Castle, I, I look at it this way. Now, first off, obviously, they're still reportedly interested in Brian Hoyer, too, from, from Cleveland, which I think, my personal opinion, you put Brian Hoyer in the offense. I, I still fully think E.J. Manuel is going to get every opportunity possible, but if you put Brian Hoyer at the at the helm of this offense last year with an okay Cleveland Browns offense and an okay Cleveland Browns defense, uh, they went 8-8. Eight and eight. Right. You give him a top, the top defense in the league, arguably, and uh, a really good offense, and what's going to happen? They maybe they win ten or eleven games. Who knows? We'll see. Listen to my thought. Tell me if I, tell me if this sounds crazy. We'll, we'll see. Well, Perez, tell me if this sounds crazy, please. My thought about it is, with Greg Roman being the offensive coordinator, and Rex Ryan being hands off with the offense, so it's his, it's it's Greg Roman's side of the ball. What you're trying to do in Buffalo is you're trying to find a guy who can play Alex Smith and a guy who can play Frank Gore. If you can make either, if you can make Alex Smith out, and I'm not saying anyone's going to be as good as Alex Smith is. He's not, he's a good quarterback. He's become a good quarterback, a serviceable quarterback and a good system. If you can make EJ Manuel or, or Matt Castle or Brian Hoyer, that guy. And then I know LaShawn McCoy can be uh, Frank Gore. Cause you're going to have, you're going to have LaShawn McCoy. You're going to have Fred Jackson. You're going to have Bryce Brown. You're going to have Anthony Dixon. So you're going to have a lot of big bodies that can hit the line and and wear them down, and then you're going to have LaShawn McCoy who's going to come in, and, and he's going to play a lot first off. But you're going to have guys like LaShawn McCoy who will tear it up, and Fred Jackson even still shows that he has some power. And, right. and it's going to be free agency in, in the draft are going to be very interesting for the Buffalo Bills when it comes to the offensive side of things. I, 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 I will reserve making a prediction on if they're going to approve their wins and losses until well, after free agency. Probably August we can talk about yeah. that. Yeah, because I really, I mean, it's still the Buffalo Bills, and they find ways to lose games. Fair enough. So I'm going to I'm gonna wait to give my opinion on that. I think LaShawn McCoy is a good pickup. I, I don't He's, know if I would have gotten rid of Kiko. Well, here's the deal. But, Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan identified that there was some sort of weakness with Kiko Alonso on that defense. Last year, the defense was very good. Um, it was a Mike Patton defense. It was still Mike Patton's defense. And when, well, no, it was. I'm sorry, two years ago, Mike Patton's defense when he was there. Kiko Alonso. Right. That's a that's a Rex Ryan defense. I don't know why I thought most of the guys that were on Mike Patton's defense were on Jim Schwartz's defense, which are are, are rolling over. But I'm getting too many thoughts confused over here. Sorry. It's okay. It's my fault. When Kiko Alonso, apparently there's just something about Kiko Alonso that um, Rex Ryan did not like. I, I'm assuming it's because they would have to move him to weak side linebacker, if I'm not mistaken. It's either yes. inside linebacker or weak side linebacker. Either way, whatever position he yeah, would he play, whatever position he was going to play, he would not have played a big role in the defense, and they, they can go pick up a guy, a reserve guy to fill that spot and, and right. be just fine. And they said the deal came together in 20 minutes. That's quick. Which obviously there was some interest. There was rumors going around they were going to cut Lashawn McCoy if they couldn't find a partner. Another team was interested. Buffalo came in twenty minutes later, had him, but Lashawn McCoy was upset for one reason. He wants his contract restructured. He wants more guaranteed money, which I can understand. You get get more guaranteed cash, make the cap hit smaller. It works out for both sides. I think when when the first snap in September happens, Lashawn McCoy will be very happy to be a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, probably. Now. Before we spend too much time on the Buffalo Bills, I mean, you got to be happy just to have a job. Absolutely. So, Plus, if you get more cash, you'd be even happier. Right. For a running back who they have short, they have small shelf life. He's been twenty-seven. Yes. Uh, some tread on the t- or some treads come off the tires, obviously, but um, he's still a ph- phenomenal player. Now we're gonna play a little game. Predict the quarterback or pre- predict the landing spot. Why did I say quarterback? Predict the landing spot for these free agents. I've got a bunch of them, so we're just gonna run through this kind of quickly. Uh, Brian Hoyer. Where do you think he ends up? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Buffalo, just because it just feels it feels right with all the you talk. Think he's gonna come to Buffalo. It feels. I I think Buffalo wants him. I'm, I'm assuming the interest is mutual. There's talk he could end up in Houston because of his ties with uh, being an ex Buffalo or an ex New England Patriot quarterback. I apologize, uh, and knowing Bill O'Brien and having ties with Bill O'Brien from from being uh, in New England as well, so that he could go to Houston. But I, I really think Buffalo makes a play for him. Because you can't, you cannot go into. I think you can't go into training camp telling me EJ Manuel and Matt Castle is going to be your quarterback competition. I think of all the places that Brian Hoyer could make up, I think you're right. Buffalo makes sense. 
They definitely need someone that's better than what they got. Absolutely. DeMarco Murray. I'd like to see him back with the Cowboys. Okay. The Cowboys are going to have to shell out some cash. But if he doesn't end up with the Cowboys, I can see him possibly going to the Colts. They need a running back, and that would be huge. Yeah, because they, they've I cut mean, a lot of cap space. There, they they need a running back. They're 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 running backs right now. Trent Richardson, he just hasn't worked out. He might not be back next right, year. Right, he might not be back. But even when he was there, he was very unproductive. Absolutely. So, well, I think uh, I think see, I was going to mention next CJ Spiller. I think they have a lot of if one goes one place, the other goes the other place. I think if Demarco Murray doesn't end up in Dallas, I think CJ Spiller ends up a, a Cowboy. That's for possible. But there's also a big possibility he goes to New York and works with uh, right. I, I just completely went blank on the name. The offensive coordinator, Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator, ex-head coach of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, moving over to the wide receiver position, Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb? Oakland Raiders. Oakland, I was going to say, too. They've got a lot of money they want to spend and get uh, get Carr some, some weapons. I don't think Green Bay can keep him. He ends up in, in Oakland. Yeah. Jeremy Macklin. I don't know. I yeah. think Kansas City just because of Andy Reid. Think so? Yeah. I, can, yeah, that might be a good fit. Torrey Smith. Torrey Smith is going to retire. Why? Uh, I'm just playing with you. I think <laughs> <laughs> you seem very confident in that assessment. <laughs> I can see I can see Torrey Smith ending up uh, someplace in Cali, like the Chargers. I I saw a lot of places pointing him to Jacksonville. Yeah, another okay. situation. A young quarterback needs a good wide receiver. Torrey Smith has proven he can work uh, with good quarterback or decent quarterbacks. Is Joe Flacco elite? I'm I'm not asking that. I'm being a smart ass. Right. Uh, tight end now. Well, that's why I was thinking of Chargers because he could work with the you know. They got a good quarterback. But they just signed and, Jacoby Jones, though. Yeah, that's true. They may not have the money to, to, to shell out for Torrey Smith. Julius Thomas. Julius Thomas is a tough one because he's, he's another one who's He's going to go for a cash grab, but there's a lot of people saying he's not invested in football at all. Right. That's what, that's what I was going to say. And like, that might turn some teams off. I could see him ending up someplace like the Giants. I'm just trying to think of who needs a tight end. I know Buffalo does, but I'm not sure Buffalo wants to shell that kind of money. Maybe the maybe, Giants need a tight end. Well, maybe Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. Um, but 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 the same thing in Cleveland, though. I mean, sure, you got a nice tight end, but tight ends are kind of at this point, unless you have a very elite quarterback or a very good quarterback who utilize tight ends, you don't see a lot of tight end play. There's also talks he could end up in Jacksonville as well. Yes, you got a nice tight end, Perez. Because you told me I had. <laughs> well, to thank you very much. Well, when you said that, I was going to say thank you, but I was waiting for you to finish your, your comment. So, because you, you just went, you got a nice tight end, and I'm like, I had to bite my tongue. Jordan Cameron, I think, uh, I think Buffalo. You, man, you really got a lot of dudes coming to Buffalo. They're going to be active. They have to be. They have to be active on the offensive side of the thing, uh, offensive side of the ball. I'm thinking there's a lot of the reason I, I mentioned a couple of these guys because I know they're coming to Buffalo. But I think you know Brian Hoyer. Uh, there's a shot he ends up in Buffalo. Jordan Cameron, a uh, uh, little bit bigger of a shot, just because they need a tight end, a good pass catcher who can block. And Jordan Cameron has had some trouble staying healthy, but when healthy, he's been good. I can see him going to the Chiefs. Okay, they have well, they have. Um, uh, Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, I believe is his name. Yeah, that's true. But I think they're in the, I, I think, think they're in the market for for like an off player. I mean, another tight end because they really don't have their guy is 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 old. But I mean, the new guy who was his name, Kelsey, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, he's going to be. They they cut their tight end to give Kelsey the starting spot. So I'm not sure if. No, that's true. I didn't think of it that way. That's okay. Buffalo, huh? Yeah. Who's who's Buffalo's current tight end? Scott Chandler. Yeah, see, he's a good tight end. Yeah, though. but they want an upgrade. They want a, a clear upgrade. I mean, there were some rumbles and rumblings on Twitter. It's just Twitter, so calm down. But there's rumblings that the Bills are interested in Vernon Davis. He's got one year and $7 million left on his contract with really? the 49ers. You never know. Crazier things have happened. Uh, I'll leave that one on the table for you. Moving over to, uh, to guard slash center, center Mike Ayupati. I better get better at saying his name because he'll probably end up a Buffalo Bill. That's the... 
That's the rumor. Strong contention. Well, Greg Roman coming over from the 49ers, uh, running the offense. Uh, Ayupati was great in his offense. He's a, not a very good pass blocker, but he's a, one of the best run blockers, if not the best run blockers in the league. And that's what the Buffalo Bills need right now. They're trying to get nasty up front. They got uh, Richie Incognito. A couple of younger guys have developed into the roles further. You get Ayupati in there. It, it may end up being uh, the difference between having a 1,200 yard runner and a 17 yard, a 1,700 yard runner is a guy like Mike Ayupati. Point. Point. I don't know if I. I mean, that's a lot of activity for Buffalo. I you never mean, know. It's that they've been they've been one of the busiest teams in the league the past couple of years with trades. They've got a little cap room. Um, they might be able to work some things out. I think you're going to see uh, maybe one or two big deals from the Buffalo Bills, and I'm not talking big in terms of like hundred million dollars. I'm talking big in terms of like the name, right? And then you'll probably see a lot of smaller deals. Well, we'll find out. Okay, moving over to the defensive end now, Jerry Hughes. <sighs> what teams need good defensive ends? I mean, a lot of teams New need Giants, good defensive New Jets, ends. The Jets. The Jets need it. I saw a lot of a lot of rumblings that he would end up in in New York with the Jets. Jets need it. Cowboys need it. Uh, I think with Hughes, it's less of who needs it and more who can afford him. Jets. Because he's going to command a ton of uh, a ton of stuff, and the Jets need to make a big a big deal on on D yeah. to kind of shore that up. Because obviously, the better your defensive line is, the better your linebackers will be, the better your cornerbacks and safeties will be because they take the pressure off. True. Greg Hardy, an interesting name. He he's still on the suspend the the commissioner's exempt list, but they said this week he's allowed to sign with the team while they determine his length of suspension, which he shouldn't be suspended because he already has been suspended. But I digress. Yeah, that that's happening a lot, though. Yeah, well, I think he ends up in Carolina. I think he'll resign. You think he's going to resign with the Panthers? Term, yeah. Well, the defense last year, you can tell without him, they were a mess. That's true, but I think someone like Sam Fran could use someone like him. That'd be a good team. That'd be a good fit. I think with Hardy, it's going to be a low risk, high reward, or a high risk, high reward type of deal. Right. Where well. Low risk in terms of you sign him to a one or two year deal for low, for small money, kind of prove yourself that you can still play, and you, even though you've been out of the game for a year. Um, the Panthers could use him again, though. Absolutely, absolutely. Interesting name, Brian Arakpo. Brian Arakpo. Here's an interesting thing for you: another Buffalo Bills twist. A lot of talk that if Jerry Hughes ends up going elsewhere, which looks like the strong uh, strong thought right now. Which may I add, Jerry Hughes for Kelvin Shepard. One of the best trades I've seen a, a, a GM make in a long time. You trade your your quote unquote bust for bust, and the Bills turn Jerry Hughes into one of the best defensive ends in the league. Uh, but I want to say I think Brian Arakpo ends up in Buffalo as a depth player if Jerry Hughes goes. Dude, you got like every free agent on no. the market covered to Buffalo I'm right thinking now. Thinking logically here. <laughs> if if they is, don't, is if the guy with Sue going to come to Buffalo no, too? No. If they don't <laughs> sign, if they don't sign a tight end, they'll draft a tight end. They're gonna sign a. They're gonna sign a, a, an offensive lineman. That they need to sign defensive depth. They have to sign. A, 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 I'm thinking a defensive end depth, probably a, a tackle, a defensive tackle. Um, what is your prediction on Arakpo? or do you want to just move on to the tackles? Arakpo might go someplace like, you know what? We'll go with the Buffalo Bills. He needs. There's a he lot needs of. To- well, here's the deal. He needs to go to a place that is strong defensively to make him look better. It may be a short-term, small deal because he's been hurt a lot lately, but when healthy, he's one of the best in the league. Right, so I can see him going someplace like Seattle. That's true, too. Who has a who has a good... You know what? It's interesting you mention that because I want to trans- transition over to defensive tackles now. Nick Fairley. Okay. Yeah, a, couple people, a couple people have mentioned Seattle as yeah. possibly being a landing spot because Absolutely. that maximizes your... It maximizes your potential. Absolutely. They already got a good defense who just needs a little key you plug players. In. You plug in. And, and and those two right there could do that for them. Where does Indomitian Sue end up? Raiders. I think the Raiders have the money. I think the Raiders at this point really are the only team that can afford Indomitian Sue. I, think, I know the Chargers are interested in them. Um, I think it's a two it's a two horse race between Miami and Oakland. Miami could do it too. Miami said that I think for Miami it would be a big mistake because you're going to be putting a lot of money into a guy that if you put a lot of money there you're right. going to have to shortchange somewhere else. But then again, you put Sue in the line, and like I said, it may shore up every other everything else and make other people look better and absolutely take the responsibilities. I, I can see him ending up in, in Oakland. I think Oakland is going to. I think Oakland trigger. is going to have a big off season. I think the fact that he wants a hundred million is ridiculous. 
you got to cash in when you can. Yeah, but still, I mean, if he's if he's worth it, I mean, he's a he's a on the on, off the field, he's a good guy. On the field, he's a scumbag. He is absolutely, and that's kind of what you want, though. That's what, kind of what Oakland wants. So, Oakland's a black hole. Yeah, it kind of goes with Oakland, and he he probably would look good in in black and in black and silver. He would look menacing in black and silver. Yeah, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Like they say, you know, a guy looks good in that. Co- I'm not right. trying. I'm not hitting on him. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. I only hit on Perez because right. he's he's uh, my he's my podcast partner. That's right. So I can see him going to the Raiders. Moving over to cornerback now, uh, Byron Maxwell. Talking about Seattle making a player. I mean, he's a good player, but Seattle maximizing your your um, your marketability. I can see him going to the Falcons. I think he ends up in Philadelphia. I can see him going to the Falcons. Philadelphia made a lot of moves this year to clear up cap space. They need a secondary. They had the worst passing uh, defense in the league last year. I believe it was. Uh, they need to shore it up, get Byron Maxwell. Yeah, but I think he would fit. In Atlanta, next to Desmond Trafant. True. You know, he's six one. He's quick. He can match up with a lot of the, the wide receivers that the Falcons face in their division. Um, I think I think the Falcons will be a good landing spot for him. And they got the cap space. That's true, too. And they have to do something because the 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 um, the tension's getting a little tighter there in, in, in Atlanta with head coach being fired, but the GM sticks around. We'll see how that all works out. True. I almost forgot who's the, who's even the coach in Atlanta. I forgot. The Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Falcons. I know they they got a new coach. I'm just. I feel like an idiot right now because I just went blank. Is, I don't know. Was it Dan Quinn? Yeah. That's also. Do you know what? You just bring up a good point. Former defensive coordinator for the Falcons. For the the, not the, Falcons. the Seahawks. About, yeah, yeah. The Seahawks. That would yeah that would be huge. I could see why that that's a possibility too. Sorry, everybody. I just went stupid there for a second on the podcast. Last name before we go to commercial break. Safety of the New England Patriots, Devin McCourty. Where does he end up? Cowboys. Really? We need we need, we need need that position to be filled, and he's a good one. I th- I feel the Patriots pay a man finally, and he's saying I'm sure he will. I'm sure the Patriots don't want to lose him, especially after just winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. But he could also, I could see him kind of going to the Eagles too, though. <clears throat> With all the money they have, they are a very, um, a very sexy pick to to make some moves this off season. Yeah, I can see him going to the Eagles. He he would fit in pretty well with Chip Kelly. Well, with that being said, uh, these are our picks, and judging by our past picks, these will probably all be wrong, and we'll look stupid and <laughs> foolish here in a couple of days. But next week on the podcast, we should be talking free agency again because, like I said, on the tenth, free agency begins. And the deals usually roll in uh, fast and furious. Did, do, did we did we talk about Andre Johnson? I mentioned him in the news. Yeah, again, well, a probably a spot where you ignored me doing the news. You probably yeah, should pay but, attention a little better. But what, what did you say about him during the, in the news? I said that he laughed in their face. Right, he laughed in the general manager's face when they said that uh, he was he, not gonna, right. He wasn't going to start, and he was going to. Well, I guess I'll ask you one more prediction then. Where do you think Andre Johnson ends up? Seahawks. Really? Yeah, I do. And what do you think his value is? I think that his value is that he get. They well, I'm give saying him, up, first off, what's his value to the team? What's his value of a pick wise or <clears throat> a compensation? Well, I think that uh, he'll probably make, you know, two years, sixteen, seventeen million. But I think he would give them another spot in the in the wide receivers that would. They're certainly, a team that, out. they're certainly a team that needs a wide receiver. Right. I mean, they, they got a couple receiver. guys who just struggled last year. And I they've think they've the, made chicken uh, chicken uh, salad out of chicken crap, if you will. I believe that's the saying that I always I always throw here on the podcast. But uh, they certainly could use a game-changing wide receiver. And even though uh, Andre Johnson's been beat up and he's gotten old uh, well, in does, terms of football, he could still. Yeah, but I mean, the Seattle Seahawks passing game was completely unpredictable last year. Absolutely. And I think this would add some predictability. Well, not predictability to it, but some uh, good some unpredictability. solidity. Yeah, good would unpredictability. Make it solid. You're saying it was bad, <clears throat> uh, yeah. unpredictable and a bad play. I can see him headed up with the Broncos, too. Well, anybody can play for the Broncos. By the way, I'm not... I I, I did miss I did miss one thing, because I know I didn't mention it, so I'm going to go back to it really quick before we go to commercial. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I'm unprepared. I apologize. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Oh, I have to just turn the page. In the National Football League, uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Restructuring. Two guys restructure this week to stay. Uh, well, first off, Marquise Colston, instead of getting cut, he restructured his contract. The yep. Saints are horribly over 
this season. I think thirty two million bucks before yes. they started cutting guys and restructuring, and then Peyton Manning took a four million dollar pay cut to stay. He had to in Denver. Well, he had to, and to help the team out, he looks like the good guy. Right, but he can earn all those back if he goes to the playoffs and wins the Super Bowl. So yes. he probably will not be earning that money back. Probably not. With that being said, another week of football talk in the books. When we come back, we're going to wrap this thing up just the way we know how to. The only way we know how to. Our way. By talking aimlessly (laughs) to each other. That's right. More of the Better Live Than Dead podcast right after this. Do you enjoy listening to Better Live Than Dead, but you're not always by your laptop to hear it on GearNetwork.com? Not to worry, we've got you covered. Better Live Than Dead and all other Gear Network podcasts can now be heard on iHeartRadio, iTunes, in the Zoom Marketplace, on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, and on TuneIn Radio. So make sure you get one of the aforementioned apps to stay up to date with the latest Gear Network podcasts. I do do that a lot. He was just, Ryan was just saying that I make fun of him a lot, people. I know we're coming in for commercial break, and I'm laughing. It's basically because Ryan was just saying that I, I, I make fun of him a lot. I do, but to his face at least. And he does the same thing to me. But I was just saying that, Ryan, I, your hair looks good. I see you just got a haircut today. Yeah, thank you. I went to uh, Chris Pogue. Dapper's Not Dead. You can check him out on, uh, I think, Facebook. You can just look up Chris Pogue on Instagram. It's, I believe, at Dapper's Not Dead. Uh, if you can't get a hold of me either way, just get a hold of me. No, no doubt. I, I don't I don't really need a hair stylist. I do shave my own head. Yes. So I don't really need a hair stylist. But if I know you were going, I would have given you my straight blade because you said he had a way to, 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 to sharpen it. He might. And I really need it sharpened. My I, strop is no longer working. I told you, you got to get a hold of the man and we'll get it taken care of. All right, cool. Because if, if he doesn't have the stuff to do it, I know he knows probably knows someone who can help you get it taken care of. All right, cool. That, that'd be awesome. But right now... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the closing segment of the Better Live Than Dead podcast, and I am sitting once again directly next to Mr. Perez. But yeah. we figured it out this time, so we, it sounds like we're on two microphones. But really, we're just on one. I can. I'm breathing the same air Mr. Perez is breathing at this point in time. Uh, it's kind of uncomfortable. Well, it, it, it is what it is. It's <laughs> at least you're thing. not sitting on my lap. Yeah, good thing. I almost am. I'm. Right, my leg is close. right next to you. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're touching legs here. Yes. Uh, it would not be a podcast without the microphone. Blowing without the microphone, the computer, the computer blew up. The, the computer. computer just stopped working. It yes. froze, uh, booted me off. Thankfully, we saved the rest of the podcast before that. Uh, but hey, people in listener world, if you're, if you, let's say you work at a, a computer place and you have a nice one laying around, it doesn't cost a lot. Or if you want to donate one to us, you know what? We would be very grateful for your donation. Yeah, this is a this is a. a Listener supported podcast. Yeah, we don't make any money on this. No, so I can't, and I only make you know a couple hundred bucks a week. I can't go out and afford to buy a brand new laptop to so, to make the podcast work. So we make do with what we've got. That's right, and we do it because we love it. We love talking to you, and we like entertaining you. Absolutely, we love talking sports too. That's right, that's right. So no. yeah, you want you want to help us out? Help us out. Hook us Let up. me know. Let me know. At Wolf SHG on Twitter. At Wolf SHG on Twitter. M R L G Perez at Twitter. Both the same on Instagram. Yes, Hit follow us, us on, on Instagram. Facebook.com backslash BLTD podcast. There you go. Gearnetwork.com, Spreaker.com backslash Gear Network. You get everything you need to know about the podcast. That's right. Listen Hi. to Get Ready America as well. Hi, Ronda Rousey. Hi, Canada. Hello, Canada. Uh, I want to say thank you to. Dude, John. I was in Canada oh. once and I. I Cut uh, me off. Sorry, bro. You're okay. It's okay. I was in Canada once and I was at a McDonald's. And I went to have a Big Mac. And it was the weirdest Big Mac I'd ever eaten in my life. The beef was like, it almost was like filled with milk. It was really weird. It was really weird. You probably should not have eaten that. I didn't. It probably had like mad cow disease or something. I don't know. It was it was odd. I remember taking a bite going, what's up with this Big Mac? Just an update. The laptop has yet to restart. That's been a while. So. Yeah, and we're, we, you know, it, we waited like 10, 15 <laughs> minutes to even... Sit next to each other to start this. The the best you may get a, a ten minute segment from us for the podcast this week being the closing. I don't know. I, I've got hopes, but the the USBs don't work very well, so it boots us off every so often. But I'm gonna get the podcast off. I'll use my personal laptop. I think next week I'm gonna try to get it. Uh, I'm gonna have to troubleshoot with John. 
uh, over at the Gear Network's uh, headquarters and see if he can help me get everything installed on my other laptop because this one doesn't have a problem with USBs and doesn't seem to bump us. Right. It's just the the stuff that we need to make the podcast happen. Uh, it doesn't seem to work on this laptop. Or you know what, peoples, go go to the uh, the, the GearNetwork dot com and, and use our Amazon page. So so you know order through through there. That way we can make money to, to buy a computer. To buy a laptop so we can yeah. sound better and not have That's to right. sit next to each other. That's right. Because it's kind of uncomfortable. It is what it is. Dude, stop touching my leg. No, I'm just playing. He's not Sorry. doing that. Sorry. He's not doing that. I want to say thank you to John and Don over at uh, Gear Network headquarters, the hosts of Get Ready America. Yes, thank you. I'd like to thank McDonald's. For employing morons. Yes. I want to say thank you to the Buffalo Sabres for creating a very horrendous third jersey that I have purchased and am i got to be honest with you, dude. I don't really find it that horrendous. I had to get it because it's like a piece of team history. You know, when you right. look back in 10 years, you're going to say that was terrible. Why do you but think it's ugly? I don't really think I, it's that ugly. I've actually warmed up to it. I don't even like the Buffalo Sabres, but I don't I don't find it to be that bad. I've, I've warmed up to it. Good, good. It's not bad. I want to say thank you to uh, my friend Brayton Wilson, not yes. only for uh, dealing with me this week for a very long time, but uh, for joining the podcast yes. earlier and talking hockey. Thank you. Uh, again, you can check him out on uh, WBNY 91.3. Uh, neutral ice. Go check them out every Monday night. I believe it's eight to nine o'clock. And then uh, follow him on Twitter at BJ Wilson SHE. Check out SabersHockeyCentral dot com as well. I'd like to thank Eat That Cooter for his. Yeah, we can't say the name. Stunning insight. Phenomenal insight. Yes, I was when I came across it. I knew we had a superstar in the making. Absolutely, that was awesome. A little rough on the edges, but you know, once you get past, you the can first, work with it, though. Once you, you get past the it. first couple f words and, right. and n bombs, you know, you're comfortable with it. <laughs> you, you really can see the truth coming out. Exactly. But uh, with that being said, <laughs> I am Ryan Wolf. I'm Mr. Perez, saying that you, you you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. That's right. We are better alive than dead. You're not. We will see you next time. Next week, hopefully, with some fun free agency talk. That's right. More baseball. We're getting closer to the regular season. And hopefully, we will have a computer. That works. That works and allows us to podcast. Absolutely. I want to say thank you again for tuning in, friends. We will see you next week. Same time, same place next week on the Gear Radio Network. Adios. Adios.